middle and bring in independent Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Sir, it's great to have you here. What do you make of this war of words between the White House and the Speaker? Thomas, I think it tells me why uh, Congress's ratings are at 9%. I'm surprised they're that high. This is not really a debate between Democrats and Republicans. What it is is a debate between what the American people want. And poll after poll makes that extremely clear and where Congress is at. What did the American people say? Yesterday's Washington Post poll. Do not cut overwhelming numbers. Do not cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. 74% of the people say ask people making $250,000 a year or more to pay more in taxes. So what you have is the Republicans coming up with this horrendous proposal for a so-called chain CPI, cut Social Security benefits significantly, cut benefits for disabled veterans. I just a few minutes ago had a press conference with all of the veterans organization, and they are very clear. They have said, you know what, we have sacrificed enough. We've lost our eyes, we've lost our limbs. Do not balance the budget on the backs of disabled vets, senior organizations, the American people are saying, let's do deficit reduction, but do it in a way that is fair. So let's look at where the, the continuing sticking point remains. It's over the revenue. The president has lowered his tax revenue demand by $200 billion, offering to start the tax rate increases at $400,000 of income. So $400,000 right there. The president has also conceded on changes to Social Security, as you bring up, that would uh, lead to lower cost of living increases. Speaker Boehner, though, now offering a trillion dollars in new revenue. That's up from his original offer of $800 billion, and that would come from raising rates on million dollar incomes and higher in this country. In exchange for that, the president's spending and entitlement cuts. Uh, there is word, though, Senator Sanders, that the speaker will consider this one-year extension on the debt limit. So they, they take that off the table uh, and not have to worry about that come February. But if that is a possibility, what numbers could you accept overall in the end? Look, you know, when we talk about shared sacrifice, cuts here and cuts, pain there, you've got to start off with an overall context of what's happening in America. I do not think it is an equal sacrifice to ask a multimillionaire who is doing phenomenally well, whose effective tax rates are the lowest in decades, to pay a little bit more in, in taxes and, and, and balance that with a disabled veteran who lost a limb and cut those benefits. That is not an equal sacrifice. We have already cut, Thomas, about a trillion and a half dollars in, and made those cuts in the last two years. To my mind, given the fact that the gap between the very, very rich and everybody else is growing wider, what the president has got to do is stand up and say, no, I'm not going to cut Social Security. I'm not going to cut disabled, benefit, disabled veterans' benefits. I am going to ask large corporations and wealthy individuals to start paying their fair share of taxes. You know what? That's not my view. That is overwhelmingly what the American people want to hear. Meanwhile, uh, Plan B, uh, Speaker Boehner is expected to take his Plan B to the House floor for a vote uh, tomorrow. Is that just DOA when it gets to the Senate? Of course it is. You're not going to have anywhere near the kind of revenue that you need by just asking people who are making a million dollars a year or more. Nowhere near the revenue. And that will necessitate, as Boehner and the Republicans want, more savage cuts in Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Senator we, are in the, we are in the middle of a recession. You can't keep beating up on people who are already hurting. Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, sir, thanks so much for making time for me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up, this blistering new report on the Benghazi attack. Blaming